I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger. Hey y'all, I'm at the Petro in Glendale, Kentucky. Just got my truck washed. Hey, tr the $58 to clean the engine, undercarriage, and the truck. How y'all like my uh, new surge tank? Still got them old hose clamps on there though. <laughs> but yeah, y'all think they did a good enough job cleaning it up? I don't think so. You know, some of these blue beacons just don't even care. I put my shine on my tires. Should be shining up pretty good. But look at this. All right. Does that look clean to y'all? Does this look clean to y'all? It don't to me. See there? All that residue. Look. <laughs> Bug didn't even get off there. And I just left the blue beacon. Some people just don't care anymore, do they? But look at this ride right here. Ain't that nice? Got him a trap hat. Trying to get her shined up a little bit. Might go get me a bite to eat. I'm gonna look at something. See, that's a nice truck. That's what I want. Hey, a nice truck right over there, too. Self dispatch tips and tricks. These are a few items that I've learned help me be a little bit more successful. And as y'all know, I run a pretty tough area with a pretty low rate because we run a lot of contract freight. So first and foremost, you want to be consistent. You want to have consistent revenue. You can't afford to stay home extended period at times and still expect to make all your expenses and bring home a little bit of money. Consistency is one good thing about the Snyder IC program because there's always freight seven days a week. You can always pick something to make some kind of money. Now, it's not always the best. It's not always going to be $2 a mile. Heck, you're pretty much lucky to get $1.50 a mile. But if you uh, stay consistent with it, you can make money. You just... You got to be in the mindset you're gonna you're gonna drive you're gonna work every day you know i try to get three thousand miles a week with the best available loads that i can get and that you know some weeks i'll make a, a, a pretty good bit of money and some weeks you know not as good depending on my expenses uh, depends on your weight of the loads and all of that kind of stuff how much fuel you use because your fuel is going to be your biggest expense while you're out here don't go to cheap areas. You will be tempted. You will see a little bit higher rate going to places like Denver, or Jacksonville, or Tampa, or some crazy places like that. But see, the key is there's hardly anything worth pulling coming out of those areas. That's right. You'll be stuck waiting on a load that's going to give you enough to pay for your fuel to get back out of there and y'all that's just not a good place to be we all know that don't fear the deadhead if you're let's say in atlanta and there's a load that you want to take that takes you back to an area you want to go and it pays decent but it's a 200 mile deadhead right now fuel is 200 I mean, fuel is $3 a gallon. At 200 miles, let's just say it's going to cost you, uh, what, 30, 40 gallons? Let's just figure 40 gallons. Three times four, that's 120 bucks. If that load pays you enough, maybe it's worth taking. You know, do the math. 
you're gonna get a little bit better fuel mileage being that you're empty going to get it and if that load is paying three bucks a mile and it's going a thousand miles yeah it's worth spending 120 bucks on fuel to make that three grand you know do the math and uh, the deadhead shouldn't be such a big factor when you're talking about those larger numbers but you don't want a deadhead 200 miles for a 600 dollar load that's when you start going backwards be patient if an area is dead and you're not finding the loads you want you know be patient maybe it'll come up through the night or maybe it'll come up first thing in the morning don't rush yourself and end up taking some crappy load to a crappy area because that can mess up your whole week be smart and wait it out if you need to but don't wait out too long because you need to try to make some revenue every day you need to have that work ethic because next thing you know you wake up and you got a truck note house note car note and you're not you're barely making the truck note but not enough to pay the house note or car note if you don't have that steady revenue coming into the house <laughs> you're, you're gonna be in trouble I mean it's not an easy job if it was easy everybody would succeed everybody would make it and if you find anybody that tells you the lease purchase is easy and simple and it's going to be a gravy train you better find somebody else to listen to because i know while i've been out here it ain't been easy you know i've always got something to repair something to fix i never know where i'm going to go from week to week because the freight lanes change and the load availabilities change you cannot give get in a steady groove out here because you have to be uh able to change with the tides of the freight if you think you're just going to go from atlanta to dallas back and forth back and forth i got another thing coming you know you're not going to be able to do that every week you need to be able to swap around and find the better rates so you can make the best money trip plan before you assign your loads now this is huge i'll be right back all right, so like I said, trip planning before you assign that load. This is a very, very important step. The loads that you choose will have very different qualifications, let's say. Now, for a load to qualify for me, I'm looking, first off, where is it delivered? Like if I'm going, if it delivers in the Atlanta area, and I'm on the southwest side of Atlanta, coming from the southwest side of Atlanta. Is that load going to the southwest side of Atlanta or is it going to the northeast side of Atlanta? And what time is it delivering? Now you take a load that delivers at four or five o'clock in the afternoon and you gotta cross Atlanta to go deliver it, you might wanna take in the count that that's gonna cost you a little extra time. Because your time is money especially now that we have the ELDs mandated a lot of you guys that have been used to being able to scribbly scratch and rip out a page and change pages and just create your own hours of service are now having to follow the letter of the law because you have an electronic tattletale so when you pick your loads you need to be very vigilant about what cities you got to go through what time of day are you going to be going through them and how bad are they typically with traffic you know like Cincinnati Ohio I just went through there this week and let me tell y'all <laughs> I think Cincinnati is a little worse than Atlanta but that's just my personal opinion I get around Atlanta pretty good most of the time now you also want to consider the terrain of the loads that you're taking are they going to be on flat ground? Are they going to be up and down mountains? Are they on super busy interstates? Or are they on busy interstates that are, you know, not so crowded? Those things will also take up your time. You know, I like to travel at night, but here lately, I've been coming into a lot of nighttime construction, lane closures, and 
interstate diversions and all those things. Oh, especially an interstate diversion. Even if it's going over a ramp, those things can cost you a lot of time. You know, Texas is real bad about diverting you off the interstate and back on at the next ramp and stuff like that. I, that, that stuff right there hurts. You need to look at where you're going to be parking. If, say that load does deliver in Atlanta. Y'all, there's very little parking in Atlanta. If you get there at nighttime and you're looking for a spot, you may be crap out of luck. I don't know how many times I've got over there and it had to be late time when I was getting there. And Luckily, we've got the operating center. Even if I've got a deadhead 20, 40 miles to get to the office center, I'll go to the op center. You know, because there's just nowhere to park. You can go to the Petro, but that thing fills up quick. Do you know the customers? Do you know the shippers and receivers? Now, sometimes I'll take a, a lower rate to go to certain shippers and certain receivers, mainly because I know that they're going to get me unloaded quickly. It's either a low stress environment, maybe even it's because they have a uh, scale on site. Because going and scaling your load once you get loaded can cost you a lot of time going to some of these stupid rinky dinky truck stops with drivers parking in front of the scales where you can't even go in and get your scale ticket and blah -de -de blah blah blah. You know. So I try to look at each one of those aspects, especially if I know the customers. Knowing the customers can be invaluable. You end up at some of these places, like I've heard horror stories about Nestle Waters and uh, some of the live unloads that I've been to. Like there's an automotive place somewhere, I think it's in Kentucky. It was one of the first places that I went to when I came on the Snyder program. It was horrible. But all in all, those are some of the tips and tricks that I use to try to make myself a little bit more profitable. Like I said, I could go on a lot more, but I can't because I'm running out of time. God bless, and we'll catch you on the next ride.